All right, my AP Calc champions. In this problem, we're gonna be talking about this continuous function f. Function f is defined on the closed interval negative six to five. The figure above shows a portion of the graph of f consisting of two line segments and a quarter of a circle centered at the point five, three. It is known that the point three comma three minus the square root of five is on the graph of f. Part a asks us if uh, the integral from negative 6 to 5 of f of x dx is 7. Find the value of the integral from ne negative 6 to negative 2 f of x d of x. Show the work that leads to your answer. We are being told that the area under the curve of f of x from negative 6 to 5 is 7. It, that means that if we were to continue this line, we had minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. We don't really know what f of x looks like through minus 6, but we just know that the area under the curve from negative 6 all the way to 5 is going to be equal to 7. And we're being asked to find a smaller portion of that area under the curve. So in the problem, we're being asked to find the area from negative 6 to negative 2. So basically the part of the function that we don't really know what the curve looks like. So the way that we can solve for this is we can take the total area so the way we can solve for this area is we can take the total area, so that would be from negative six to five, f of x, d of x, and we can subtract the area that isn't included in the interval that we're looking for. That, so that would be from negative two to five, integral from negative two to five, f of x, d of x. Since we know that this is gonna equal seven, we can go ahead and substitute that in. So now, basically, the only missing piece that we need to find the answer is to find the area of the curve from minus 2 to 5. So what we're looking for is this here, this, all of this stuff here. And this is made up of uh, many different types of shapes. So let's go ahead and start solving for the area under the curve. This first segment is a triangle. And before I start to you know calculate uh, 1 half times base times height of this triangle, what I can do is I can notice that the very next shape right next to it is that same triangle, but under the x-axis, so it's gonna be negative. So these two areas are actually gonna cancel each other out. We could, if you wanted to be extra safe, you could calculate it out. So it, could, it would be one half times the base is one and the height is one. So one times one equals one half. And then the next triangle is gonna be a negative of, with the same calculations of base and height. So they just cancel each other out. Uh, the same is true for this next triangle we see here. These next two triangles we see here. Uh, once again, they're just gonna cancel each other out. If we wanted to do the calculation, it would be one half times, it looks like the height, or it looks like the base is one half times the height is one. And then we're gonna add a, a negative out front for the first triangle. So this triangle here, minus one fourth. And the next one is gonna be one half times one half times one is gonna be one fourth. From negative two to one, the area under the curve is actually just zero because these triangles keep canceling each other out. So really our end goal is to find the area under the curve here from one to five. So let's go ahead and see what shapes we can split it up to. Well, I can see that there is one square here, then we can split it up into a triangle. So the area of the square is just gonna be base times height, so that's gonna be one. And then the area of the triangle is gonna be one half base times height, the area of the triangle. So that's gonna be one half times, it has a base of one and a height of two, so that's gonna be one. So the total of this section here is two. Now we need to find the area under the curve that's under this quarter of a circle. So the area of this, one way we can think of this is if we sort of zoom out, so if we sort of zoom out and we take a look at this three by three square here, you'll notice that the area in yellow is gonna be this three by three square minus the area of the quarter circle. So we can write this as, so this is gonna be equal to our three by three square. So that's just, you know, a square or length of three, uh, height of three, minus, we're gonna subtract the area of the quarter circle. So that's gonna be pi r squared. That's the area of a circle. Uh, then we want to divide it by four because we're only including the fourth circle that's a part of the three by three squared. And the, the radius for this is going to be the same three. 
three squared. It's, it tells us it's a quarter of a circle and it's centered at that point five three. So a radius is one, two, three. So the area of that yellow segment should be nine minus nine pi over four. So now we can go ahead and add up all of these to get our area from minus two to five. So like I said, one half plus minus one half is zero. Then we add minus one fourth and add a fourth. So this is also gonna be zero. So at this point at one, our, our area is zero. Then we're gonna add one and one. So now we're actually getting somewhere. So we get seven minus one plus one plus nine minus nine pi over four because we're adding uh, the purple section and the yellow section. So now we're going to get 7 minus 11 minus 9 pi over 4. This should be minus 4 plus 9 pi over 4, which you could rewrite as 9 pi over 4 minus 4. And that should be our final answer for part A. All right, moving on to the next problem. We're being asked to evaluate the integral from three to five of two times f prime of x plus four dx. So we can use some laws of integration to split this up into the integral from three to five of two times f prime of x dx plus the integral from three to five of four dx. So then when we take the integral of f prime of x, we're going to get f of x, which is really, really convenient for us because we have the graph of f of x right here. So we're going to get 2 times f of x. This is going to be from 3 to 5 plus uh, the integral of 4 will just be 4x. This will be from 3 to 5 as well. So it's going to look like 2 times f of five minus f of three plus four times five minus four times three. So this is gonna be two times, f of five is gonna be zero, right? So we can just say zero minus, what is f of three? Well, f of three is right here. And you might be like, well, I don't really have any idea what that number could be because it doesn't really fall on a whole number. But remember, if you scroll up to your problem, it tells you that we know the point three comma three minus the square root of five is on the graph. So it tells you that right there. So you can replace this with three minus the square root of five. So then we're gonna, we can distribute our two. So we're gonna get these, this zero is gonna cancel out and then we're gonna get minus six, distribute the negative plus two, five plus we're gonna get this is gonna be 20 this is gonna be 12 plus 8 so we're gonna get this is equal to 2 plus 2 times the square root of 5 as the answer for part b moving on to part c we're being told that the function g is given by g of x is equal to the integral from negative two to x of f of t dt, find the absolute maximum value of g on the interval negative two to five. Justify your answer. From negative two to five would be from here to here. We're given f, but g of x is the area under the curve from minus two to x. So uh, we're gonna want to apply our candidates test here. So for our candidates test, first we're gonna want to find our critical points. Why do we wanna find our critical points? maximums occur at critical points. So the critical point, since g of x is equal to the integral, if we take the derivative of both sides, we're gonna get that g prime of x is equal to f of x. So we wanna find where g prime of x is equal to zero, which is the same thing as where f of x is equal to zero. So where on this graph do we see that f of x is equal to zero? It looks like it's gonna be at minus one, it's gonna be at one half, and it's gonna be at five. With the candidates test, we are already going to be evaluating not just the critical points, but also the endpoints because the maximum might occur at those endpoints. So um, we can kind of set up a little table. So we have x and then we have g of x. Now we're actually evaluating it at um, each x that is a critical point to find where the absolute maximum value of g is. So we're gonna put minus two, that's our one of our endpoints. We're gonna start there. Then we have minus one as a critical point. So critical points 
at x equals minus 1, x equals 1 half, and x equals 5. So then we're just going to add those to our data table as well. So 1 half and then 5, which is both a critical point and an endpoint. So g of x is the integral from minus 2 to x of f of t dt. So what this is going to look like is we're just going to plug in the x from our table into our g of x and solve. So for this first one, we get minus 2 to minus 2 of f of t dt. Anytime you take the integral in the lower bound and the upper bound are the same, you're just going to get zero. So this is probably not going to be our absolute maximum value, but you never know. Next thing is going to be from minus 2 to minus 1 f of t dt. So here we're finding the area under the curve from minus 2 to minus 1. So from here to here. So it looks like the area under the curve is just going to be the area of that triangle, 1 half base times height. Our base is 1, our height is 1, so we're going to get 1 half here. Moving on, we're going to go from minus 2 to 1 half f of t dt. So we're looking at the area under the curve from minus 2 to 1 half. So we get this same triangle. As I mentioned in the first problem, though, we have a triangle that's under the x-axis that's going to cancel out the area of this one because this one's going to be positive and this one's going to be negative. So the area from minus 2 to 0 is 0. And then we just need to calculate this part here that's also going to be negative. So um, 1 half base times height, 1 half times the base is 1 half, and the height is 1, and then we're going to give it a negative sign because it's below the x-axis, so we're going to have minus 1 fourth. Also probably not going to be uh, the maximum, but you, you never know. This final one is the integral from minus 2 to 5 f of t dt. So this is, so this is the area from minus 2 to 5. So if that looks familiar to you, which hopefully it does, you'll notice we actually solved for that in part A. It wasn't the answer to part A, but it was uh, something we had to solve for in part A. Remember right here, we solved for it. So we did 7 minus the area from negative 2 to 5 of f of x dx. So we could just use 11 minus 9 pi over 4. That would be our g of x for this, 11 minus 9 pi over 4. So now we just compare the each of our g of x's at our critical points or our endpoints. So we're going to see that the absolute maximum value of g is 11 minus 9 pi over 4 because this value is greater than negative 1 4, 1 half, and 0. Moving on to the next problem, we're being asked to find the limit as x approaches 1 of this here. So with this problem, we can just go ahead and plug in 1 for our x and see what happens. So we get 10 to the first minus 3 times f prime of 1 over f of 1 minus arc tan of 1. Simplifying this out, we get 10 to the first power is just 10 minus 3 times f prime of 1. Okay, so we're given the graph of f and we're being asked to find f prime of 1. So f prime of 1 is just going to be the slope at x equals 1, so the slope here. So it looks like as we go over one unit, we go up 2. So it looks like our slope would be 2. So we multiply by 2. Remember, slope is defined as rise over run, which is 2 over 1, so it's 2. Then we want to find f of 1. So if we clear this out, f of 1 would be 1, so 1 minus arc tan of 1. Now we can keep simplifying this. We get 10 minus 6, so 4. 4 over 1 minus arc tan of 1 is equal to is equal to pi over 4. The reason why is arc tan is also known as tan to the negative 1 power. And when we solve for what the value of x would be to give us 1 for tangent, it would be pi over 4. So this would be our final answer for part D. Hopefully this helps you out with this AP Calc problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.